In this presentation, we will see about the database system architecture. We are now in part one of the database system architecture. From the last few presentations, we realized the importance of having DBMS by organizations because data is crucial. And the volume of data handled by DBMS is really fascinating because the data that is processed by DBMS is not just the bit of data or bytes of data. They range in kilobytes, megabytes, gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte, exabyte, zettabyte, yottabyte, and whatnot. In the coming future, we may also end up in more data volume than what is specified on the slide. So when a database needs to handle this much of information, obviously the main memory cannot handle this. Though the main memory is faster in nature, but this main memory cannot store the database because it's volatile in nature. At the same time, the secondary storage devices like the hard disk or the SSDs, the solid state drives, will also not be sufficient due to the increased volume of data. Then what's the solution for this? Because this contemporary world is handling an enormous amount of data. So obviously we are in the need of storage servers or data centers or cloud that can handle large volume of data. The reason why I am projecting this is that I'll give you a real time example. Just see Facebook how much volume of data it is handling every day. Take another server, the WhatsApp server, which is handling an enormous amount of data. Every day, every minute, every second, it handles a large volume of data. At the same time, whatever we post, it is stored in their servers. Let's say you have posted your photo in your Facebook account and later you have decided that you don't want that photo to be posted. So obviously we will be deleting that, isn't it? So when you delete, it's just deleted from the view of yours and your friends. Is it actually deleted from the Facebook server? No, it will not. So whatever we upload, everything is stored in the servers. And think about the complexity of handling such high volume of data. But still, our technology and servers are able to handle this. That's the part of being in this contemporary world. And coming to the DBMS architecture, this is also referred as the database system structure. And what we are going to learn in this presentation is the part one of the database system architecture. At first, let me show you the architecture diagram. Here is the database system architecture. If you see the diagram, we can see the users are at the top level. Then IV users, the application programmers, the sophisticated users and the database administrators. Obviously, each users will be preferring some set of tools for their activities. And here is the tool level. And if you see the architecture diagram, we have two important components, the query processor part and the storage manager part. We will come to this later. And also, if you see the databases are actually stored in the disk. So in this example, we are assuming that the database is actually stored in the disk. And that's why this storage is referred as the disk storage. So in the database architecture part one and part two presentations, we are going to exclusively focus on all the individual components that constitute this database system architecture. I mean the components in the query processor as well as the storage manager. In part one of database system architecture, we are going to exclusively focus on the storage manager and the disk storage. I mean, we are going to focus on the buffer manager, the file manager, the authorization and integrity manager, and the transaction manager. Also, we are going to see about the data indices, the statistical data and the data dictionary. So let's see one by one in detail. So we are clear that we are going to focus on the storage manager, which is this. So we are in this part and we are going to focus on all these managers. Before seeing the managers one by one, let's understand why do we need the storage manager and what role it plays in the database system architecture. Basically, this storage manager provides the interaction between the low level data stored and the application programs. If you see the architecture diagram, this storage manager provides the interaction between the application programs that is from the top level and the data stored at the low level. So here is the actual data that is stored. And to be precise, here is the actual data that is stored in the database. Actually, this storage manager only handles all the queries that are submitted to the system. What do we mean by this? If you see the architecture diagram, the query processor processes the queries and this will give the request to the next level, which is the storage manager. 
and that is why the third point says that this is also having an interaction that is received from the query processor to the disk storage and also this storage manager is having the interaction with the file manager you may be asking me a question we have already compared file system and database system and we understood that databases have more advantages over file system in effective storing and retrieval of data even though we are saying that it is a database system internally it is made up of files only but it's not going to work as the regular file system rather it is going to work differently why because we need to effectively store and retrieve the data in database management system at the same time the various drawbacks that we have seen with the file systems needs a solution here though we are using internally all files but this is not going to work as per the file system concept it's going to work as per the database system concept and also we know that only low level data are stored and this low level data is actually the raw data that are stored on the disk using the file system provided by the operating system and obviously whatever the interaction that we make see we may do some insertion or deletion or updation whatever it is coming from the front end or from the high level those data have to be stored in the database to be precise it has to be stored on the disk only because this database is on the disk only so all the raw data are stored on the disk and what format it is going to use this is going to use the same file system format that is provided by the host operating system so we are clear that if data are to be stored on the disk it uses the file system provided by the operating system and these raw data are provided from the users or from the application layer or from the topmost layer and what about the dml commands what do we mean by dml commands these dml statements are the statements that deals with the insertion of data or deletion of data or updation of data or sometimes selection of data from the databases we know databases are going to store the data and data related operations are dealt by the dml statements example select insert delete update no worries in the last lecture of this chapter we are going to focus on the dbms languages at that time you will be able to understand what is ddl what is dml and other languages also we have a separate chapter called sql where we are going to exclusively focus on the sql the structured query language along with ddl dml tcl and dcl operations i know things will be unclear but for now just understand dml is data related so when such commands are received this storage manager only translates the various dml statements into low level file system commands why because the internal organization needs to be supported by the operating system and this operating system obviously will be using some file system and whatever the data manipulation language commands that we give these things have to be translated into the low level file system commands in simple terms storage manager is responsible for storing retrieving and updating the data now we will see the various managers that are there in the storage manager as per the architecture diagram we are sure that these are all the four components or managers in the storage manager part number 1 the authorization and integrity manager number 2 the transaction manager number 3 the file manager and number 4 the buffer manager and also as already stated we are going to look at various data structures the data files the data dictionary and the indices we will see one by one now but let's go to the architecture diagram at first we will focus on the first storage manager component the buffer manager and this buffer manager is actually responsible for fetching the data from the disk storage here is the disk storage and into the main memory and also this buffer manager decides what data to cache in the main memory i hope you are already aware of cache memory in computer systems this memory is mainly used for faster access so buffer manager takes care of this at the same time this buffer manager is very crucial in terms of another important operation that is handling the size of the data we know the databases will be larger than our actual main memory so this buffer manager will also take care of this memory management and coming to the second one the file manager we know already this is mainly for allocating the space on the disk storage we know actually the databases are already stored on the disk and we may be inserting new data or deleting the existing data or updating the existing data 
This file manager is responsible for allocating the space on the disk storage and also the data structures. We have a lot of data structures followed in the disk storage and this file manager is used to represent the information stored on the disk. And coming to the next one, the authorization and integrity manager. This component or this manager is used to test for the satisfaction of all the integrity constraints that we enforce on the database. Say for example, balance should not be less than zero. In such case, if any operation that is carried out on the database where the balance is going to be zero or lesser than zero, that operation needs to be aborted. That should not be permitted because we have given an integrity constraint that balance should not be less than zero. So all these integrity constraints are handled by this authorization and integrity manager. At the same time, authorization of data, I mean, who can access what, that is also actually handled by this authorization and integrity manager. And coming to the last manager, the transaction manager, and this is the very important part because this ensures that the database remains consistent despite system failures or any hardware or software failures. At the same time, this transaction manager ensures that the concurrent operations carried out on this database are actually not conflicting with each other. I mean, concurrent operations are permitted, multiple users can access the shared data item at the same time without conflicting each other. So this is ensured by the transaction manager. Anyway, in the next lecture, which is the part two of the database system architecture, I will elaborate more on this transaction manager. We are done with the storage managers. What are all the components that we have seen? We have seen about the authorization and integrity manager, the transaction manager, file manager and buffer manager. Before we sign out, let's see the various data structures used. What are all the data structures we are going to focus on? The data files. Actually, this stores the database itself. Here is the data files. So here is the actual database that is residing. And coming to the next one, which is the data dictionary. We have already seen about metadata, that is data about other data that is stored. So these metadata information are stored by the data dictionary. And coming to the third data structure, which is indices. We know obviously data are stored in the databases and we need to ensure that the data are accessed fast. Storage and retrieval are efficient and effective. And we are also sure that databases are handling large volume of data. In such cases, referring to the exact data item that we want. Say our data may be in the first location or it may be in the last location. But it should not be the case that databases takes a lot of time to process our request. It should be as fast as it can. So in such case, indices helps us to retrieve the data faster. Anyway, in the chapter indexing and hashing, I will be talking about indices elaborately. For now, just have this. This is used to provide fast access to our data item. And if you want an analogy, this is like index pages in our textbook. Why do we need index pages in our textbook? Suppose we want to refer something. We need not go sequentially to refer that. If you go to the index file, this index file will take us to the exact location what we are looking for. And the similar concept is applied on the databases for faster access. So what we have seen now, we have seen the various data structures like the data files, the data dictionary and the indices. One thing we have left, what's that? The statistical data. So this part is mainly storing the statistics about the data. So this will also help us to take some decisions for managing the databases. So what we have learned today? In part one of database system architecture, we focused on the storage manager and the disk storage. And already we have seen about the various types of users in one of our previous presentations. So in the next presentation, we will focus on the remaining part, which is the query processor. So I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.